Good afternoon, everyone. Great to see you all. And uh, this is all very different. My name, my name is Ian Nicholson, by the way. I, I work with 24-7 Prayer, focused mainly on Europe. And uh, I'll, I'm going to be hosting today, but really handing over to the other guys to do most of it. But it's uh, great to see so many faces here. And uh, in a normal world, in a typical 24-7 world, we'd go around finding out who everyone was and a little bit about your story. But uh, we've got 45 minutes, so we'll, we'll jump straight in. Uh, there is a chat function, so uh, if you want to comment anything, please do as we go through, whether we'll have time to pick it up during the session or even if it's something we take out of the session, that would be, that would be great. So, uh, yeah, so this seminar, the themes of all our seminars are really around uh, singing the song of the Lord in a strange land and this feeling that we're, we're in a very strange land at the moment, but also as we emerge out of it, it will continue to be strange and very different to the world of a year ago and um, each of the contributors so this one is uh, singing songs that will awaken a new generation and uh, each of the contributors here uh, are living what they're talking about in terms of uh, they all met Jesus as young people as students uh, and are now investing in a way that other young people and students might be transformed by the presence of Christ so we have uh, Rich Wilson who's a good friend who uh, planted a, a wonderful church called Open Heaven with his wife Ness. Uh, Ness now leads that church. She also leads a network of churches in, in the UK. And Rich is, is uh, one of the former leaders, founder leaders of Fusion, which is a student movement, uh, particularly in the UK, but also overseas and so on. And, is a, and I know Rich very well and just know his passion for revival, his passion for prayer and his passion for awakening. Then we have Sarah Burrell, who lives in... Uh, who's Brazilian, but lives in Rome, uh, where she and her husband, Rene, planted a church uh, 10 years ago. Rene leads the church. Sara tends to work all over the place, uh, again, with students, with I IFES, International Federation of Evangelical Students. But she's also behind Revive, which is a large conference for students that began last year. Um, and there were 3,000 attendees in Germany from... I think, you know, mid 60s nations, well over 60 nations were there uh, for that first revive and it's only going to grow. And the focus on that is awakening for the student generation. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, we've got Maxi Ertingen. He's Max is German, a good friend. He lives in Vienna, Austria with his family. He's a founder part of Loretto and Loretto is a Catholic renewal movement that really began with a sovereign move of the Holy Spirit quite a few years ago now. And they've been sort of stewarding that. And their vision really is for a new Pentecost. And, um, and it, it's just always encouraging and always inspiring to be involved with Loretto, just their love for Jesus and their passion for the presence of the Spirit and for prayer. They connected with 24-7 very strongly. So it's now a wonderful renewal movement. So we've definitely got the A team here. So I couldn't ask for three better people to look at this subject. So I'm just going to hand over to them to lead us through this time. But I'm just going to pray quickly and then hand over. Father, we thank you for uh, just this opportunity to step aside and to consider the whole thing of awakening, prayer, revival in a new generation. And uh, Lord, I, I, we do pray. We do pray for a, a spontaneous move of your Holy Spirit across our continent in these coming days and months. We pray that as we re-emerge into, into the wider world, in a sense, that we'll be emerging into a world that you have primed and ready to move. May your kingdom come in Europe, we pray, in our lifetime. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brilliant. I think, Rich, it's over to you, isn't it? Wonderful. Thank you, Ian. Uh, really good to be with you, everybody. I'm excited for our bit of time together, for the conversations we're going to have, for what it's going to spark. I want to encourage you to listen out to what God might be highlighting, what might be resonating with you. Um, and uh, I'm a, I guess I'm a little bit apprehensive chatting with Maxi and with Sarah about their heart and their vision. Uh, together, there's decades of experience and longing, and uh, I want to draw that out. So I want to start with chatting with Maxi and uh, talk about Loretto, a little bit about what sparked it, but also what's continuing to happen. So Maxi, could you just fill us in a little bit about a little of the journey you've been on with Loretto? 
Well, personally, um, Loretta for me was a was a, a lifesaver, uh, a place where I was able to live out my Christian faith with, as I thought would consider normal normal people. <laughs> I I didn't know any normal people that were believers when I was young, uh, and and it was a place where I could just pray and 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 learn Christianity and and have fun, and I was also drawn to it by an amazing amount of wonderful women, good-looking girls. Uh, was lucky enough to marry one of them, um, uh, and so it was a lesson for me. And then I want basically I wanted to go on and live a normal life and start working in, in the world and and all that. And I just had it just I just had a sense at the same time that the thing that really interests me was sort of to work for the church or to work for Loretta or so to kind of invest into that. And that for me was more interesting than, than anything else in, in the working world. And so and so when when people began to ask to ask me and, and to, to pull me in, especially Girk, who's who's our founder, I, j- I just kept saying yes. And and now, now I'm in full-time ministry since 10 years, at most longer, it's 15 years. And so and and what we see with the young people basically there was a word that came to, that came to my mind when we were praying, and and it was a voice from, from from a bishop in 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 Austria, and he said that he was afraid of the radicalism that will that will emerge in society during this pandemic and afterwards. And and I thought, actually, I'm not afraid of the radicalism. I ask myself if we are radical enough, um, because w- what we see among the young generation is that they want the they want the real deal. They want the whole thing. They want Christ and Christ alone, and they want to. And they want to follow him in a radical way, and everything else is very unattractive for young people. And so we're trying to focus on that, and so we open spaces for young people so they can encounter Christ. And then we ask, and then we try to disciple them and send them send them on mission. Uh, that's all we do. That's, that's all we do, and we try to keep it simple with that, and not to make and, and not to to and not to make too many other things than that. 24/7 prayer for us is a is a total acceleration and accelerator uh, to to keep moving ahead. Yeah, wonderful. I just picked up on the fact that you you yourself kept saying yes, and I think there's a secret there for any disciple and students in terms of our appetite for pursuing Jesus and appetite for being used by God. And and how do we help maybe more students say yes? Maybe overcome some of the barriers, the fears the lies in society in order that they, they can say yes? One, one thing that I think I, I, I learned a lot from 27 Prayer and from what I saw um, how, they, how they did things, that they, have an, they, ha, they don't speak about it a lot, but they have a, a strong emphasis on, on spiritual parenting. So they take their time with young people or with younger people uh, also with me, I mean, Ian. Ian knows the place where I live. He came by uh, without agenda, and we do a lot of discipleship training courses, of course. But that's one part of the thing. The other part of the thing is that you just have to spend time. You have to spend time, as my wife and I. Here's my wife. <laughs> spend time with our kids. It's just just important to to spend to take your time and spend time with young people and just to hang around with them. And yeah, and, and, and yeah, that, that just, and it kind of, and then you kind of help, you kind of help them read out what God is asking them to, to move ahead. And then you just make an open space and then you let them say yes. Yeah. And so, and so just, just discipleship is life on life. They, they see it in you. They see the yes in you. They see the commitment in you. And, and there's something in which they, they can copy. They can, Imitate. Thank goodness, thank goodness, not only in me, and because sometimes I say no, <laughs> and there are a lot of other people who also live, live like that. So we are so the, the internal thing of Loreto, we have about like 700, 700 people, and from those there are about I would say one hundred that kind of form the entire movement. And among these, you have a number of people who are just on fire, and t- totally normal but on fire, mm. and that is a and that is an atmosphere and, and a culture that is just is, that that is appealing. And if you and if you and if you live at, and if you live rooted in Christ over over a time, you you become like a tree with a with the leaves don't turn green and the fruit comes at the right time, and that's and that's what it, and that's what what is attractive. Wonderful, and, and and Maxi, in terms of where we're at at the moment, in particularly in Europe, 
what do you think is at stake for this generation coming through? And what are you particularly praying and believing for? Um, so obviously there's a, there's a, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm pretty stirred up by the things that we heard in this gathering. Um, obviously there's a, there's a lot of anxiety now and there's a lot of sense of things being very fragile and there's a lot of um, polarization within the church. The one side is extremely fearful, the other, the other side is extremely radical towards church authorities. And so, so we have all that. And at the same time, at the same time, I think that there's a, that there's a call upon us Christian, uh, upon us believers to be people of hope, to live from the hope to live from to live from the future basically from what will come and 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 to show that um i think this could be a moment that we can miss mm -hmm. but if we but if we stay people of hope and if we keep on if we don't go too strong into this these typical worldly polarization within the church and if we stay sort of focused on on hope which is an interesting theme for, for this conference for the gathering i think we then will prevail um what we're seeing now within Loreto, which is really interesting because this is a really this is a very exhausting year for us it's a very untypical year for us um but what we're seeing is that this that um our online resources they're normally double as many people on our online resources than 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 usually double double the number uh not every day but a lot uh, a lot of days and at the same time there are god is opening gates for new facilities for bigger facilities at, at the same time so i have a sense that he's preparing us mm -hmm. for more stuff and for bigger stuff and yeah. in that and in that place of an economical down uh, of an economical crisis uh, and uh, and of and of a pandemic it's just important to stay to stay calm to stay focused uh, prayerful and, and people of hope and then i think and i think we will prevail and we will prevail so i think that, that is the main that is the main message and it's and, for us, it's a big test. I mean, we're, we're all being shaken as we had never been shaken before. And so, yeah. Yeah. Maxi, thank you. I'm going to come back to you in a moment. We're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, Sarah, I want to hear from you. And uh, you are based in Rome and you head up a bunch of different IFES, as, as um, Ian has mentioned. But just to share a little bit about your heart for revival and particularly personal revival. How is that? Uh, impacted you, particularly since you've been in Europe? What's been happening for you? Yeah, thanks, Rich. So my journey with revival and with personal revival began uh, in February. It will be four years ago. So I actually was not really familiar with revival, history of revivals. You know, I, th I thought it was interesting, but it's not something that was particularly with me. But I was I happened to be on a sabbatical after a period of an assignment uh, of three years. And uh, in that uh, January, February 2017, I suspected that I had uh, something in my heart of unforgiveness that I needed to deal with, you know. Uh, so I just uh, uh, got out this book, a friend recommended, it was a book about how uh, on the parable of Matthew 18, of because God has forgiven us so much, we forgive others. But the author was very radical and said, list every people in your life that you haven't fully released forgiven us for. I was like, oh my goodness, this is intense. <laughs> But I list and Rich, I had 27 people <laughs> in my little list. And I just went one by one, you know, my parents who I adore, you know, but just, you know, there's always stuff there and things. So I just went one by one. But after this two week journey of forgiving, first I felt free, you know, Jesus just set me free. Like I've never experienced that kind of freedom. And if it was only for that, I would be forever grateful. But what I wasn't expecting is that after that, I was just consumed with a hunger, you know, just a hunger to, uh, for God's presence, for worship, and my heart was just burning, and just the way that I, I can try to think of it is like, maybe there was all this unforgiveness stuck in this, but once God had dealt with it, there was just so much space, you know, so ever since, now it's been four years, and my heart has just been burning and believing that God is going to breathe afresh in the student generation and praying specifically to see an awakening, to see revival among university students across Europe. 
Uh, so it was a long story short, but it culminated with 3,000 students and others coming at, at New Year's Eve, praying for revival from 68 nations. But yeah, we feel that it's just the beginning, just something that God is giving birth, but he's the one giving birth. And together uh, with Fusion, together with all, so many that are burning, we believe in that God will do something in Europe that we haven't seen in, in, yeah, in our lifetime. It's so good to hear from you. I, I remember so clearly when I bumped into you in Finland, maybe three years ago, and uh, I was traveling around Europe looking for signs of what God was doing with church and students, convinced that something more needs to happen across Europe. 20 million students, we desperately need awakening, we desperately need new pathways. I was feeling a little bit like Elijah when Elijah's in his cave and God, am I the only one left? I didn't think I was, but God, am I the only one left? It's like, no, no, no. There's, there's 7,000 that God is hiding away. And I, I sense there's something of that with regard to the student world, that maybe there's lots and lots of leaders, student age and older, who God is preparing. He's raising up uh, that we maybe don't know about, but occasionally we bump into. And yes. when I bumped into you, I guess my spirit leapt because yes. I saw some, you know, I saw an answer to prayer in terms of what you were talking about and saying. Um, just share a little bit more. I mean, it's remarkable that you uh, you were just beginning to plan that gathering uh, when I when I spoke to you, when I met with you, yes. and that's now happened. Just share a little bit more about what you think the significance of that was, what's, mm -hmm. what hope that gave you, what else you, you saw because of that. Yeah, just first to build on what you're saying, it was exactly the same, which actually the week before I met you, as I was going to, to this conference in Norway, someone that was praying over and say, you know, God is preparing and there's divine connections that you bump to. And I remember that we just, you know, sat alongside and we had like a 15 minute, 20 minute conversation. It wasn't, but you uh, you could, you were just sharing how hot your heart was burning for awakening student generation. And I was in my soul saying, yes, God, you are putting this to others. And it was just like this confirmation that God is speaking to his people. And and this is something that we are not alone. So just fed to that fire. Uh, but to your question, what is he doing? I think this is a time of like, I just feel the message of John the Baptist, prepare the way, you know, prepare the way for God's visitation. And that God is just having this uh, altars that are burning across Europe and just that this incense that keeps rising and rising and is rising our calling to just keep burning personal revival it starts it starts with people burning it's not you know Max is saying like in Loreto they have the leaders that are burning those are the places that Holy Spirit is just calling even more so to keep burning and and just prepare the way for for a win the God, for just uh, for him to turn the tide and to see not only one, two, ten students, which we, we rejoice for every single life, but to see multitudes of students coming to Jesus in our lifetime. And do you think you, you, you saw some of that fire when uh, those students gathered? Is that what you're noticing? What, what, what are you sensing on, on the students at the moment? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think it was the first getting. So we were just to see 68 nations coming together to pray for revival. I mean, I think the most powerful sessions were, were just prayer. You know, we had a, a three nights, Revive Our Hearts, Revive Our Universities and Revive Europe. In Revive Europe, we just divided in different sub-regions and pray for each region to each other. But just that longing. But again, it feels also just uh, the beginning. It feels just a, 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 like a, a small birth, like we're sowing still and that springtime will come. You know, this is something that we believe that God will continue uh, to breathe afresh. And uh, yeah, we're hoping, I mean, at the end of next year, the, the, our, uh, we're praying uh, to, that, together again, 5,000 students at New Year's Eve, 14 months from now. But, uh, but uh, just this image, the last image is I wanted to, to uh, hand over to you, but I wanted just to speak over this group. This very week, a group of fail house in, in Hungary that many of us know, you know, I was praying with the, the leaders there and they saw this image. I just wanted to speak this image over this group in the seminar. It was this, this vision that I, initially she gave to, uh, to me, but I, as I was praying, I thought this was this group. So you saw me just running and running, like, I was, you know, running for Jesus. And there were many students running behind, uh, but then the students surpassed and they started running running and they were just running faster than I was and I was trying to catch up with them and I feel that even in this seminar I, I just sense a calling that Jesus is saying that some of us are like running and giving vision for intercession for revival for awakening for you know our group our church or our country or our organization but the people that are running in luck it will come a time that they will suppress a running that you know like that they will be running and we will be catching up so I just wanted to speak that over 
I think that's so true. I feel like that. I, I'm convinced that there's people around me who are going to go far beyond me. They, they, there's greater anointing, uh, and I delight in spotting those people. Um, Fell has. It's worth talking about. Fell has. Just uh, that's another encouragement. Uh, as far as I, I've I've been over a couple of times in recent years, been a part of their gatherings, and uh, they've they've emerged out of Budapest, uh, a group of young people. And it grew very, very quickly over a period of, of, of weeks. They started meeting, I think, to pray, just to pray on a Thursday night, if I recall fully, just five of them over a summer. And then they said, oh, how about we try and open this up? And they opened it up and 30 turned up and then 50 turned up and then 60 turned up. And then I think 12 months later, I think they gathered 3,000 people. Um, students uh, a student movement led by students for me another sign that these these things can happen anywhere um absolutely it's this pockets of revival that god is already bringing and raising his people for him absolutely wonderful wonderful um let's let's bring in in maxi again and let's let's talk about you know this this disruption what's the connection maybe for students at this time maybe with awakening um is there is there a connection or is it just a, a coincidence what do, what do, what do we think <clears throat> good question um i think that i think the i think the hunger for god is um is growing um there are, there are a number of indicators um uh, like sarah just talked about um and there's a number of things that, that, that are being pioneered now. Also, um, there's a there's a joint gathering with with Kibitz House, Augsburg, and a few other groups next summer, where we're expecting like maybe ten thousand people coming, maybe even more if, if that works. But things are being planned that way. Um, and so and so, yes, I think I think there is a th th there's, there's a sense that that we can actually move into a next level. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there's a big hunger among 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 young people um probably like there wasn't when when we were younger um i would say i mean that wasn't very long ago of course but <laughs> um but I th but i have the impression that that the, that the widespread of hunger um towards god is bigger than it was 20 years ago and i think that this is a moment where can where god is kind of is kind of scratching people so they know that they're that they're itching for him Mm. That he's that he's sowing out salt, so people know that they're, that they're, that they're thirsty, and this is what we're seeing. I mean, Pete said yesterday that, that the number of prayer houses worldwide have, have doubled. Nick and Gumbel is saying that the people uh, coming to Alpha online is is probably bigger than ever. Um, we we're seeing the numbers on, on our resources doubling. I mean, these are these are just small indicators that there's a that there's a hunger for more. And so yes, I think I think that, that this is a that this is a huge time of of, of hope, and it's a huge chance, mm. and that God wants to bring in a big harvest. Yes, yes, and, and for me the anecdotal evidence was there a little bit before the the pandemic started. It felt like there was a growing trickle of new life in the UK in the universities. It felt like that was something that was growing. There was certainly a, 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 an increase in confidence with evangelism. I think 20 years ago, the confidence in evangelism was very, very low. I didn't know many students at all who would call themselves evangelists, whereas now I, I feel we've, we've overcome some of that. Uh, and uh, for me, they're all signs. Also, other signs are the, the, the church was largely disinterested in student mission 20, 25 years ago. And now lots and lots of churches are thinking we, we've, got a, we've got a role to play in this. We've got a mandate. Um, and there's a, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a culture among, among the, between I would say 20 and 35 year olds who, who work with young people that is basically, that is very similar around the world, no matter what denomination you look in. So this this idea that people call themselves missionaries, this is very common to us nowadays. Also, also in Austria, also also in Germany, and it wasn't it wasn't twenty five years ago, and they kind of, and they kind of look the same. I mean, of course, they, they're original, but they have, but they kind of move in a certain they, they move in the spirit. So so they move in a spirit filled culture, and this is and this is very and this is new, 
and and they encourage and they encourage one another and they sort of communicate cross borders worldwide and this is extremely encouraging yes yes and, and sarah you are head of evangelism for ife so so this is what you you do day to day is you encourage students to 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 become uh, evangelists how how are they responding to uh, the, the sort of the, the training and the work that you're doing right across um, IFES in Europe. Yeah, first, if I can build up what you and Maxi were saying before of uh, at this time, I mean, with 24-7, you know, has been calling the church to prayer all these, you know, decades now. Uh, and we feel that revive is just the beginning. But to see what the pandemic broke out, to see, for example, here in Italy, they call, I think, in August, in um, March and April, uh, a nationwide fast and prayer during uh, when it was hitting hard for the pandemic. And to see other um, denominations just coming together and calling for fast and prayer, we saw it's like, guys, this is what we've been talking about. Now that everybody, it, it became the big agenda, which was the big agenda for 24-7, you know, in decades so it's, it's it's amazing just to see the prayer level and the uh, fasting level uh, during this type uh, being raised as in terms of evangelism I think you know uh, it's the time that we see the big questions of life of also coming to the surface you know maybe death hasn't been something that is close to our reality maybe as in the spirit and people asking big stuff and it is a time of shaking it isn't it mm -hmm. so uh, it's been interesting just to see the students bring for uh, to be intentional to the friends that are having those deeper questions that, that they can be bold and share share Jesus in this time. Wonderful. I I came into the the start of lockdown. I felt God speak to me very very clearly around three very simple uh, statements. One was what we sow in this season really matters. Uh, it ties in a little bit with what I'm saying. We could miss the moment. The other was there's ground to be taken or lost. Lots of it. And the other really was a question: what does it mean to seek first the kingdom? Uh, and, and I particularly felt that against uh, self-preservation. It felt like there was a lot of fear around right at the start, and maybe still is. Um, so how do we seek the kingdom over self-preservation? So, so those three things for me haven't gone away. If anything, they've got stronger. I think that's often the, the way with the prophetic, that they're not just there for the moment, but they're there to encourage you through the next season, however long that will be. And I still feel like this is really super important for the student world. What we sow in this season really matters. Um, so so what, what else... Um, should we be doing now? You know, we're coming into winter. It's certainly in England. It's going to be cold. It's going to be wet. It's going to be grey. Uh, do we hunker down? What is it? What What should we be sowing? Do you think in this next season that will lead to awakening rather than maybe some other things growing in the fields that we don't want to see grow? I just love that word, Rich, that you were saying. What we sow into the season matter. Throughout January and February, the first that it could just stop coming in my in my spirit during my prayer time is those that sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those that sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. And uh, uh, it, for me, a lot of the times that I was, you know, praying for Europe. I, I sometimes couldn't give just words to it. I would just cry. I would just cry for this continent, you know, and cry. And I couldn't understand what was going on. But this this verse is saying, as we intercede for our, our continent, as we intercede for revival, our tears are like seeds that are sowing for revival. So I, I do think that at this time it's, time, it's time to sow. And it's time to believe that uh, the Holy Spirit in his time, he will bring spring time. But to sow, be intentional in our, in our prayers, in our tears, to sow into... Uh, in alignment to what God is, is doing and saying at this time. Yeah. Uh, and I, th I think we're seeing that with, with prayer as well, aren't we? I think the students are thinking, well, what can we do, the Christian students, for the first time um, in living memory, I think, haven't just huddled together in Christian huddles because they've not been able to. They've not been able to find themselves in the same way, certainly in England and, and the UK. So they're forced to hang out with their flatmates and their course mates. And it's trusting that, that there's enough of God in them to make a difference there. And I'm, I'm actually quite excited by that. You know, it's frustrating on one level for churches. They don't know how to contact them. There's no, there's no avenues to contact with students. But the fact that the Christian students are there and they're scattered in a way, um, I'm excited to see what comes about. I'm believing that God's hand is actually on them. And, and like Maxie, this thing of hope, um, 
I think there's words of hope that needs speaking over the student world at the moment, but also people who can see hope and reframe what's going on where maybe it's not always obvious. So, so Maxie, do you want to just come in again and just talk a little bit more about hope? What, what hope can we sow in this season? And Sarah, feel free to chip in as well. I think it's, I think it's very important to, um, to, 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 to look at that or, or to go into that what what Hannah said this morning is to is to find to find a perspective that is that is not just natural but a super that is supernatural and I think it is it is important to 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 make statements and comments within that context on a regular basis I mean we have a we have a all of us have, have platforms to communicate with thousands of people and it's important to use them um, what 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 we're seeing now um, at least in the Catholic world, but not, but not only in the Catholic world, is this, is this t totally boring and very tiring uh, conversations about masks and not masks and how you know, and, and, and so there are rules that we have to follow and all that, but this, 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 this is not the point. The point is that, that is, is, is to bring the gospel and to bring it in a very simple way and, that, and that's being taken up and people, and people like it and they like it because they, because they want, because they want to have the, they want to hear the gospel and so if there's a time in our life to preach the gospel it is now mm. and and that's about it basically <laughs> it's, it's 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 very simple it's very simple and and what i what i really urge myself and all of us is not is not to go too deep to the questions of of how to behave appropriately or to or to or to sort of think about um, how many, how many people per square meter are allowed in a church building and all, and all that, but to, just to preach, the, get the message out and get it out now and get it out quickly because people are looking for it. Mm. I, I think I agree. I mean, early on in lockdown, we were resting with all kinds of things uh, and, and then asking the question, I wonder how Jesus would behave now. What would he be doing if he was at university, if he was a student or is a student worker? How would he go about his work? What would he be saying? What would he be sharing? And, and maybe in thinking about that and, and considering it, we might have some clues as to how we should be operating and yeah. behaving yeah. and taking risks. The student mission is it's not on hold. No, of course not. Of course not. And I think it's, I think it's just, it's, it's important to be in the public now. It, it's important to be on the Ario Park, to be heard and, and to get, there's a, there's a, an, an Italian priest in, in the 17th century in a pandemic uh, who, who went on street corners to, to hold, to hold prayer meetings. And he said, we have to stay apart from one another, but we can pray together. And that's what he did. And that's what we can do now too. And it's, and it's, and it's important to kind of, to kind of, get that to make that step uh, over our own basically problems and laziness and and worries mm -hmm. and 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 to keep the and to keep preaching the gospel this is why this year is so so exhausting because we have to kind of overcome our own stuff uh but but still but still the momentum is there now and it's important to get the message out now and it's and it's, and it's being and it's being picked up and and from yeah basically that's that's it mm -hmm. and, there, and there are a number of ways there are a number of ways also to to get as you said that that, that people um pray in houses and pray, pray pray in flats and pray with their fellow students mm -hmm. and all that and just to give very simple very sometimes sometimes you don't even have to but just to give very simple tools and resources on, on how on how to pray mm -hmm. <laughs> just, yeah. just keep it coming and keep it going and 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 do not think too much about what will happen in summer 2021. Who knows? And how nice was it in summer 2019? Yeah, it was nice, but this is not important now. Mm. So th th this is the main thing I think, mm. and just to keep the and and to keep the perspective, um, not anti-natural, acknowledge the stuff that is happening, but keep it supernatural. Yeah, yeah. And some of that is just grace fueled, isn't it? Just got a lovely comment down there. Sometimes, you know, the best thing a student can be is just kind to their neighbour. And that's true for all of us. Uh, but great opportunity, probably going into lockdown again, how we can look out for those who are self isolating, doing different things, how we can be good news at this time, not be afraid, bring hope, share our conviction for God's goodness in the midst of uh, the disruption um, and I think I think some of it as well is um, 
is 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 recognizing that uh, that the media is responsible for sowing considerable challenge and at times lies into this generation. The, the headlines in the UK and on a documentary were, you know, that, that, that for young people, their, their future has been robbed. It's being, it's being destroyed. Uh, but that's not the narrative we have with Jesus. That's not the narrative we have of hope. And, and, and early on, I just felt very, very strongly that this potentially was the making of a generation that um, lots of people we know who faced adversity, it's been the making of them. It's because of what they've had to go through that they've then gone on to achieve all kinds of things. And actually behind most leaders and movements and mission agencies are stories of distress and heartache because in that there's a formation that takes place where calling is deepened it's incubated it's awakened and i feel the hope is that through all this god is working out a much bigger purpose and maybe just maybe he'll charge this generation with things that other generations have not been able to take hold of to rebuild the world to make it a better place that's my prayer and i believe that's one of the things we want to be sharing with the student world at this time a great hope a cosmic hope a much bigger hope that sees beyond this short period of time that, 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 that most students today have got 40 to 50 years of service and life and giving themselves away. And when they look back, this will just be a very short segment of time, even though at the moment it feels very consuming and disorientating. But, but actually, God will work through it. So that's, that's some of what I'm living with. That's brilliant, Rich. Thank you so much. That's really helpful. <laughs> of a generation, I meant that the making of a generation. I love it. Well, that's what we're here for, one way or another. That's what we're here about, isn't it? That's what we want to see happen. That's part of the awakening. I think the other thing with revival history, uh, particularly big student awakenings or global awakenings, is they've rarely happened in a period of months or years. Often, it's been over decades, and and we think back to some of the the different groups, whether that's Zinzendorf and him starting with five students and then building the Moravian community and that flowing over many decades, seeing a movement of the spirit. Similarly with Wesley, you know, he was uh, unaware that there was a bigger movement around him. You know, he didn't have the media, he didn't have the feedback. Um, and, and, and the social change, the change we want to see that isn't just about um, seeing people find Christ, that we want to see that, because we want to see that impacting society, and it takes years. So, so I believe we're, we are on track with that, and that this is a moment that God will use uh, to further his purposes. I have to believe that as a Christian. Um, Sarah, Maxi, tell us a little bit. We, we've got a few minutes left. Tell us what hope uh, you would want to share uh, with those who are listening, uh, but also... Um, you know, just what you're carrying, you know, what keeps you going? You know, Sarah, you've come over here from Brazil. You're in Rome, planting a church in Rome. Some people might say, that sounds like quite a tough gig. What keeps you going? What hope are you holding on to? Maxi, you've been doing Loretto for 16 plus years. Uh, what keeps you going? What hope would you want to share? I'm still sewing off what you just said, the making of a generation. I'm still like <laughs> reverberating this. This is so good. I was just building on that and saying, uh, um, the end of February, as I was praying about reviving this season and this next edition, I was like, God, oh, what do you want to say? And I just sense the Holy Spirit said, Numbers 13. And I'm like, okay, let me open my Bible. And honestly, as I was, I was like, God, please do not let it be a gene genealogy. Like, I have no idea what the numbers, you know. And I, I opened, and it was the story of Caleb and Joshua visiting the, the promised land. So here's what I'm praying for that yes, uh, especially in Europe, coming from Brazil, you know, pessimism in Europe is very well known and people are not, you know, m m the most maybe hopeful continent. But here's what I'm praying, that as we see the giants in front of us, that God is raising generation of Caleb and Joshua, that they're not afraid of the giants because they know the God that is going before them. They know the promises of God. So we can stand with uh, Caleb and Joshua, even though it might not be fast as you were saying, it might take decades with Zizador and Wesley, but we are believing the promises of God of this generation, that God is bigger than our giants yeah yeah wonderful wonderful 
what what keeps me going basically um, is is encouragement and by by friends and family mm. normally <laughs> uh, uh, also by you guys very often uh, and I think and I think in this time it's very important to to sort of be very very open and transparent on what you're going through and 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 what, and what, and what kind of things move you and what kind of and, and where you're hurt where you're not hurt and to be very very open because it is a very 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 tiring time and mm. so that actually keeps me going there's a there's a uh, yeah, I, to be totally honest, it's 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 prayer times alone with friends, with family, and and exchanging and and speaking with people who kind of go the same path, mm. and kind of live live as followers of Christ, and that keeps me going to see that. That's so good to hear, and it's so earthy, isn't it? It's so real, and I think that's what's going to keep. I mean, I, I resonate with that. There's all sorts of great things going on in my life at the moment. It feels like COVID is is quite low down the list, bizarrely, um, but it's those sort of things that keep us going. And I think this is the same for the students as well. They, you know, that's what they need. They need small groups around them who are going to encourage them, spur them on, um, be a place where they can be really honest, because that's the kind of that's the kind of thing we want to see multiplied. We want an honest Christianity. We want an honest discipleship culture that's getting birthed and born at this time. Um, we've just got a little bit of time left. I, I wonder what prayers we could pray at this time for this generation. Ian, have you got something you would say? Or you, is yeah, that just, very, just very, very quickly, and then if we go two minutes over, that's fine. It'd be great if, we, if you could pray for us all. No, I was just going to... Just anecdotally, uh, Sarah knows this, but I, I, you know, I was talking to the guys in Skopje, Macedonia, and two students, two evangelical students from Skopje, and there aren't many more than that, mm. went to Revive. And uh, our church leader back in Skopje said, since they came back, they're on fire, and they're about a group of 20 now. And they've come to faith, and they're praying, and they're, they're just praying together for, for revival. And I just thought, you know, if it can happen in North Macedonia, if it can happen in Macedonia, it can happen anywhere. And I get more excited by stories, if you like, from the margins than from, from the centre. But the, the other thing was that it, it sort of thirdly, you know, feels to me the 1990s were a decade very much of travail in prayer. A lot of us were carrying things. It felt like um, giving birth, but often you weren't seeing what was the fruits of it, but you just couldn't stop because you felt you were travailing. And I think we're there again. And I think Pete's word from last night about climbing the mountain again, I think it's about travailing mm -hmm. in prayer. There's a burden. I mean, Sarah, Sarah's obviously got it, but others as well uh, on that. And, uh, you know, every generation needs its new Pentecost to know. But I, I, I just, I was going to ask actually if, if you three, you know, we've got a couple of minutes, could just teach, just pray for us because there'll be a lot of people on this call. Oh, and I also mentioned David Baker put something up. Why don't we prayer walk on the university campuses that can bring revival? And I thought there is actually a group that has been meeting for about a month, beginning to think of plans of how to pray on every university campus in Europe. So well done, David, you're in the flow. Great, great suggestion. So would that be okay if you pray for us? Yeah, absolutely. Well, why don't, why don't, why doesn't, um, uh, Maxi go and then Sarah go and I, I've got a crafted prayer that I just like to pray you know sometimes I can write these prayers and then leave them on one side but to, I need to keep praying certain prayers so um, yeah. I'll, I'll pray that so, so so Maxi why don't you lead us and then Sarah pick it up and I'll finish thank you I'd love to um, Father thank you for this time that we just had it on Zoom and I thank you for this moment in history and Father, although we are distressed and we're a bit concerned, I ask that you pour hope into our hearts. Yes. All, all of us here on Zoom, that you pour hope into our heart, perspective and vision, uh, and and fire and a thirst for the lost, especially among the young generation. Mm. And I ask you, Father, that you that you that you let your life grow and mature in us, so that we can actually be that tree that Psalm one talks about. Planted it, planted in water. Come, Holy Spirit.
Yes, God, we say yes to your word of this season being the making of a generation. We say yes to your invitation about sowing intentionally for revival, God. We say yes to what even saying about, uh, Ian saying about travailing prayer, God. And Father, we ask you by your spirit, would you raise up Caleb's and Joshua in this generation, God, that our eyes will be on you, God. Keep our fire burning for you, Holy Spirit. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. And Father God, we hold up this student generation to you, individuals known by name and loved by you. Come and be close to the lost, lonely and isolated. May your presence invade their presence. Dispel despair and disappointment. Repurpose ambition and affirm true identity. We declare they are made for good works and kingdom cause. May hope arise and open eyes. Awaken student hearts and minds to you. Call them, summon them, place them in family and the community of your church. May this shaking be their awakening. Christ on high, come visit the universities today, we pray. Amen. 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 You're, you're, you're all good together. You ought to do this more often. <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you to all of you, Sarah, Maxi, and Rich. And uh, it's been great. I'm sure there's been lots of stuff firing off in everyone's minds and hearts as you've been talking. It's a really good format. Really appreciate it. And uh, onward and upward. And uh, yeah. People on the seminar, do get in touch if you want to know more about things like prayer walking campuses. I'm sure if you're involved in any sort of youth or student work, you will hear about it in the coming months. But uh, yeah, great stuff. Onward and upward. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.